Lesson 10 for November the 7th, 2021, Unit 3, Visions of Praise. Our subject, the rest of the story. Devotional reading, Revelations, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. Our background scripture and lesson print, Revelations, the seventh chapter, verses 9 through 17. Our key verse comes from the second part of that 14th verse, the King James Version, and it reads, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Again, the King James Version, Revelation 7 and the second portion of that 14th verse. The author states, as a result of experiencing this lesson, we should be able to understand how God's salvation and justice for all people inspire praise and worship. And secondly, embrace the significance of praising God in unity. And lastly, respond to God's love, goodness, and grace with joy and exaltation. Our reading will come from the New Living Translation, and we're starting with that ninth verse, and it says, After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. Now we may not be too familiar with the ninth chapter, but verses four through eight, I believe it is where each tribe, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel are all listed. And it is said that there were 12,000 from each tribe, and that equals 144,000. And there's one group of religious people are saying that only 144,000 people are going to go to heaven. And I had a conversation with one of them, and I told them, in that case, some of y'all ain't going. So we need to be careful when people quote us scripture. We need to make sure that we read it for ourselves, the verses before and the verses following. And if they can't tell you where it is in the word, ask them to find it to call you to let you know where it is so you can read it for yourself. Because sometimes people will try to set us on the wrong road. So we have to be careful about that as well. So we see here that this, uh, the book of Revelation is written by the Apostle John. And it is said that John was also a prophet because he also wrote the epistles, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and also uh, the book of Revelations. And he was sentenced to, it, the scripture says, in the Isle of Patmos. And he was, that was a form of punishment for him because he was all out there alone. Um, and even today, when we are sometimes persecuted and prosecuted for our spiritual uh, beliefs, if you will. But the ninth verse, getting back to that, and it says that after he saw the 144,000, then there was another number he saw that no man could number. And it's saying that the crowd was too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb, and that's Christ, because we know that it, he's sometimes referred to as the unblemished Lamb. And they were clothed in white, which is a sign of purity, and held palm branches in their hands. And on Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem where they were laid the palms out on the ground. But the palms was a signal uh, symbol, excuse me, of victory. And that 10th verse says, and they were shouting with a great war, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne from the Lamb. And we need to be mindful in knowing that God sent Jesus in John 3, 16, sums it up to save us from our sins. And he's on the throne and then that 11th verse says, And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings, and that's the lion, ox, man, and eagle. 
and they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. And this was just a symbol of reverence. They were lying prostrate before the Lord. And even now, even if for those of us who can't physically get on our knees, it's a matter of humbling ourselves and being mindful that we can, we need to thank God even before we start asking him for things. And one of the theologians or one of the writers of one of the sources I use, he says, sometimes we're so busy asking God for stuff, we forget to thank him for what he's already done. So let's try to make it a habit before asking God for anything. Thank him for what he's already done. And I don't know about you, but we got a lot to be thankful for. And that 12th verse says, they sang, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. So we need to be mindful, too, that we keep God in his rightful place. But some of us, sometimes before we get up to speak, we say, give it on to God who's the head of my life. Let's make sure when we say he's the head of our life that we keep him there. Let's not demote him when it's convenient for us, but let's consult him in all of our doings and in all of our saying. And that's one sure way of not going astray or displeasing God. Then the 13th verse says, Then one of the 24 elders asked me, Who are these who are clothed in white? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who died in the great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. And when I was reading that and preparing, I thought about the song that uh, Sean Pace Rose sang, and they were talking about how a cow can eat green grass and give uh, white milk. And she said, well, let me tell you something. He took my black soul and he washed it in his blood and I came out white as snow. The thing about that is we know that in terms of a cow, it's true literally, but in terms of our sin, we know that we can only be saved by the blood of Jesus, accepting him as our personal savior. And it does, we need to strive to be sinless without using I'm only human as an excuse because he knew that and I, you, we have to really thank God for sending Jesus, even though he was God in the human form, there's not any emotions that we experience in the word, we can see Jesus experience those same emotions. And he even said, you know, the word says, get angry, but sin not. Because when he drove the money changers from the temple, he was mad. I mean, because he didn't appreciate them defiling his father's temple. So let us be mindful that if we keep him first, pray and stay prayed up, if you will, there are things that we in our humanness may not be able to accomplish, but we get strength through the power of God and we can do things that we thought that we could not do, but through his strength, through his power, and through his will, we can accomplish some things and we make sure that we give him credit for that. And then the 15th verse says, that is why they stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will give them shelter. And that 16th verse says they will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. And we know the 23rd Psalm. He will lead them to springs of life, giving water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. And we should be comforted by those verses. And one of the resources, they made a point to say that many ministers, pastors, or whatever use those particular verses in delivering eulogies, the last good words that we say over someone's once the Lord has called them home. But in this life, we're going to go through trials and tribulations. But the thing that we need to find consolation in knowing, as the word says, We've been made to do it for a night. Oh, but joy cometh in the morning. And know that when we know the Lord as our personal Savior, he's going to protect us. Some things 
he's going to keep us from going through. But then on the other side of that, some things he's going to allow us to go through because that builds on our testimonies and it also validates because some people get the misunderstanding that just because we know the Lord that our lives are going to be trouble free. Not if God has not done anything for you or if you haven't gone through anything, what is that you can tell people that God has done for you? And we need to recognize that. And even, I know you have to get there from a spiritual and faith standpoint, but just know that sometimes our trials and tribulations, that's what builds our strength and also validates our testimonies. Because I often say that people say he's a doctor in a sick room. If you had not had a common cold, how do you know? He's bread when you're hungry. If you've been eating steak and potatoes all your life, how you know? And then he's a lawyer in the courtroom. You don't even know what 201 properly is. So how you know? So we need to be mindful, even though we hear people say this. I mean, is it valid? Is it really true? To be, oh, no, it's just the same. No, when you're saying you are giving a testimony, you ought to be able to tell it from firsthand experience. And there can't nobody tell it like I can tell it what the Lord has done for me. And even when people try to rehearse your misfortunes or even the mistakes or even bad decisions that we made, who know those things better than you? Nobody. So, you know, yeah, I get it. I'm guilty. But now, you know, I tell people I used to be too, too, but I ain't too no more. And so these are the things that we need to let people not get us off track. Let us not lose focus, but tell them that's not my story anymore. I got a new story. I got a new life through the power of Jesus Christ. I've accepted him as my personal savior. My focus is different. So as we grow in grace, grow in age, we learn that we sometimes need to refocus and let God lead and guide us to where he wants us to be. And these are the things that we need to recognize and realize in our own lives. And once we come together as parishioners, church members, whatever word you want to use, then that makes us all stronger. And that's why God says, Hebrews, I think 10 and 25, forsake not the assemblies of ourselves together because we gain strength in God from one another. Because my testimony may be different than yours, but guess what? It may help you get through what you're going through. So we need to recognize and realize that and know that God has already made provisions for us the way he wants it to be. It's not left up to us, but we need to recognize and realize that God is in control. And I want to back up here for just a moment. I think it's in that 11th verse where it says, And all the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders, and the four living beings, and I've already said that's a lion, ox, man, and eagle. And they were seraphims. They had uh, six wings. And then it says, they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. And then the number four has uh, a significant uh, meaning. There are four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. There are four regions uh, in the world, north, south, east, and west. The visions of the day, morning, noon, evening, and midnight. And then also um, the seasons of the year. There are four, summer, spring, summer, fall, and winter. So four has a significance uh, even in our daily lives. So we just need to kind of everything has a purpose according to God's design. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. And Lord, we're just asking you right now, Lord, to strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down. And Lord, let us make a statement, Lord. Let us tell the world about what a mighty God we serve. And Lord, let them know, Lord, that we all have the right to the true life, but it's left up to us. It doesn't matter how bad mama and grandmama and grandpapa want to save, Lord. That's the decision we got to make for ourselves. And Lord, we ask you to lead us and guide us that we may help someone along the way, that they will get to know you for themselves. And Lord, we can't tell them that life will be easy, Lord, but whatever it is that they're going through, they won't have to go through it by themselves because you've already told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, for that, we just want to say thank you. 
And Lord, we ask you right now to look on this, the Progressive Baptist Church. Lord, bound us so close together that one can't lean for the other. And Lord, we're asking in faith that we know you're granted in grace. And Lord, we ask you to have mercy upon the sick and the shut in everywhere. Lord, be the doctor that they need you to be right now. Lord, I'm not trying to sing anywhere because I realize you're everywhere at the same time. You're God and you're God all by yourself. But Lord, we're just asking you right now. Oh, Lord, to intervene. Lord, so much is going on. We turn the news on, we hear about the violence. But Lord, let us as your children stand up, speak up, and hold up the bloodstained banner. And Lord, we know that you're able, but we've got to do our part. And Lord, lead us and God to strengthen us that we may do those things that you've assigned into our hands to do. And then, Lord, when it's yours to call and hours to answer, we're asking thee for a place in our kingdom. But we can sing and praise your name forever. They say every day is Sunday, it's always howdy, howdy, never goodbye. And Lord, we're believing it, that it's done. In your darling son Jesus' name, thank God and amen. <clears throat> 